RIP routing information protocol. This protocol has two versions. One is called as RIP1 version 1 and the other one is called as RIP2 RIP version 2. RIP1 is a classful type of protocol which means that it cannot carry the subnet information while RIP2 is a type of protocol which can carry the subnet information which means that it can support slash 24, 25, 26 any type of subnet RIP1 could not. So this is the major difference between RIP1 and RIP2. Otherwise both protocols are almost similar both have total 16 hops both are like uh, distance vector type of protocol so let's explore about rip2 routing protocol okay i have prepared this summary cheat sheet for you so that you can easily remember about these routing protocols about layer 2 protocols so you can print this sheet and paste it on a wall wherever you sleep wherever you work wherever you study so that when you will see these type of sheets summary sheets or cheat sheets every day automatically these concepts will be into your mind without any extra struggle without any extra cramming also the quality of these sheets is very high i can zoom in i'll share the pdf in the video description as well so it is very good for printing and long term memory let's say today you learn about ospf about rip about vlan and you have an interview after three years so at that time you will just pull up this sheet go through it and it will be very easy for you to uh, remember all these concepts especially interview points so let's start about rip version 2 how it works okay first of all rip 2 is a distance vector type of routing protocol routing protocols have two types actually routing has mainly two types right we already know that routing has two types one is called as static the other one is called as dynamic routing dynamic routing has further few types dynamic type of routing protocols right so we have igp interior gateway protocols and we have egp exterior gateway protocols Inside exterior gateway protocol, there is only one type which is called as BGP, BGP version 4, which is common these days. There were many, but this is the most common we have to remember. Okay, after that, under IGP, we have two main types. One is called as distance vector and the other one is called as link state routing protocols. These are two main types. Distance vector routing protocols, they have their own merits they have their own metrics based on which they decide how to choose the path and which path to choose link state on the other hand they have their own metrics they depend on bandwidth actually distance vector they depend on number of hops so link state has many many protocols most famous is for example ospf but today we are discussing a protocol which falls here called rip next i will explain about ospf so this is the place of rip among routing protocol family so i hope it's clear rip1 rip2 both okay the standard of rip2 is rfc 252453 which came in 1998 so i would recommend everyone to go through this rfc it is based on an algorithm which is called as bellman ford algorithm the number of messages which it supports there are two types i will explain later the hop count is the metric which means rip will decide its path based on the hop count what does it mean let me explain this means let's say we have to reach from a to b we have to send some routing information or a route or we have to send a ping message or any other message from a to b so if there are these two paths let's say the upper path has one two and three routers in between while the lower path has one and two only right so these are actually two paths to reach from a to b so rip will choose what and let me give it some bandwidth as well let's say the bandwidth is 100 mb here 100 mb here the whole path is 100 mb right end to end and then this one is 10 mb only 10 mb 10 mb means less bandwidth so if the routing protocol is rip so let me ask you which path it will choose it chooses based on the hop count so rip will choose this path this will be the path of the rip while if it is ospf ospf is going to choose 
from here which we will discuss later that why because of this bandwidth actually it doesn't care how many routers are coming so rip will choose based on the number of hops because here we have two routers in between as compared to this path so it will not choose this path it will choose this second path this is called as metric or hop count and the maximum hop counts which rip can support is 15 after 15 it thinks that okay the routing information is not reachable is not useful any anymore why why we have designed like this why 15 let's say we are reaching from a to b right we want to reach from here so after going through all this information if it comes like first hop second third fourth fifth sixth seven up to after 15 hops it thinks that okay 16th hop is unreachable so total number of hops are from 0 to 15 the admin distance is 120 for both rip 1 and rip 2 it supports load balancing and then the multicast address which it uses to transmit its information is 224.0.9 all this information actually is very very important for your interview so please remember these please paste this sheet or at least print it keep it with you for interviews so another major difference between rip1 and rip2 is that rip1 uses multicast this is the multicast address while rip1 uses broadcast so it's an old type of protocol rip1 is more older than rip2 and for ipv6 it uses this address ff02 double colon 9 and it supports both ipv4 ipv6 and it uses udp for data transmission and it uses udp port number 520 it supports authentication as well while rip1 does not support so it means rip2 is more secure as compared to rip1 and rip2 supports CIDR and vlsm which means subnetting so this is a quick introduction of rip1 and rip2 and their major differences so let's discuss one by one other important points about rip1 and rip2